Hey, it's Mike here, and today I just felt like I needed to respond to a very recent video called How Our World Would Change If Everyone Became Vegan by the channel Brightside, which has 10 million subscribers. It's one of those vegan-related videos that pretends to be neutral, but then when you actually take stock, it's like eight points saying how horrible veganism is for every one positive point, not neutral. And coincidentally, there are some concepts in this video that I've been meaning to talk about for a while, so no better time. And yes, I do have a little bit of a nasal thing. I haven't been sick for like three years, so this is really weird for me, but I'm feeling good. So in the first minute I was watching it, I was like, oh, this is cute, a little world installing veganism. And then... An enormous amount of stray farm animals. Really, it opens with one of the most irrational justifications to not be vegan ever. I even did a video, a mock trailer about this a long time ago. When the whole world went vegan, the unthinkable happened. Farm animals overran the world. We stopped eating animals, and all of a sudden, they were everywhere. Only one man saw it coming. Dave, that guy from work. We can't all go vegan. What we do with all the animals? You know, I bet they would they would totally take over the world. Yeah. Yeah! The most important point here is that we artificially inseminate virtually all of the 50 to 70 billion land animals that we kill every single year. So we just have to stop doing that and the population will naturally go down. They go on to talk about how we could just release them into the wild and how many of our domesticated species can rewild like cows, but some like chickens can't and they would just die. And releasing these animals would expose them to predators and well... Setting these animals free would mean dooming them to a slow and painful death from hunger disease and predator attacks. Yep, being vegan equals animal suffering. Somehow it always does. Alternatively, they mentioned the option of reservations for farm animals, but somehow that just wouldn't work. Unfortunately, doing this would be unbelievably costly, and it's not entirely clear how we could come up with these resources and money. There would probably be a lot of generous donations from the public and volunteer workers to take care of the animals, but it's hard to predict if that would be enough. A biatch, please. Seven billion vegans, it would be enough. With a full world of vegans, we would have an animal sanctuary budget that would be out of control. So the obvious solution here appears to be phase down the population of animals by the stopping of breeding and then putting the remaining animals a sustainable amount into animal sanctuaries. But what would that actually look like? I actually ran the numbers, rough numbers, of two situations. One in which slaughter continues at the normal rate and another in which there is no slaughter at all during the transition. So here is scenario number one with the current pattern of slaughter but a halting of breeding. So we start at 70 billion animals and population goes down very fast. It would be all the way down to 28 billion just by six weeks because of how fast the chickens are killed and how 50 billion of those are chickens. At five and a half months, most of the billion pigs on earth would be gone. By year two, we are down to around 8 billion animals. Cattle are the only ones that live this long without being slaughtered, about 18 months. Otherwise, it's just breeding animals, you know, 6 billion hens and about 260 million dairy cows. By year three, it would just be the dairy cows and breeding pigs and then whatever animals you allow to breed. And I wanted to put forth this scenario to demonstrate that virtually all animals that are born today will be dead within about three years. And that just shows that whatever transition vegans choose, the brutality against animals right now is worse. And to scenario number two, entertaining the vegan transition overnight, saying there is no slaughter. Again, we start out with 70 billion animals. And at year two, you'd only see a small amount of deaths, maybe just die off of unhealthy factory farmed animals. By third year, some of the older breeding animals would start to die off. Then going to year four and five, we'll see a sort of ramp down of natural deaths until we reach year seven, which is about how long chickens tend to live, which would get us all the way down to about 15 billion, because again, 50 billion of the 70 billion animals we have are chickens. So that would be a major drop off. Moving on to year 11, we'll see a drop off in pigs. That's when they would die naturally. And then goats and sheep at 13 years. And then 17 to 20 years is when the cows would be dying naturally. And at this point, as a society, you could just decide what a sustainable population of animals would be and go with that. 
Perhaps the biggest challenge of keeping that many animals alive for the first few years is that in a vegan world, the conditions that they're currently in would be so unacceptable that you would have to expand their living quarters. A lot of them are just cramped into warehouses and things like that. So you'd have to fix that. In terms of money to support all of those, it would be quite a bit of money. But again, we aren't going to see this change overnight. It's more likely going to be a lower in demand for these animal products, which means less breeding and a few of those cycles down until we get a very low animal population. That's probably how it would happen. By the way, did anybody else notice the satanic graphic at a minute and 54 seconds? Um, conspiracy theorists, let me know your thoughts down below. Next time you see a vegan, you will subconsciously be triggered to say, how do you know if somebody's vegan? Don't worry, they'll tell you. Oh wait, everybody already says that. Severe economic problems. It's very likely that not long after the worldwide transition to veganism, the economies of some countries would simply collapse. Yeah, this is definitely a neutral video. The inhabitants of countries like Burundi, Eritrea, and Zambia don't even have time to think about going vegan. The lack of food and major famine leaves them happy with just about anything to eat. Yeah, I've heard this one a few times. People are like, by telling people to go vegan, you're essentially spitting in the face of subsistence farmers in rural Africa. Like, you might as well go to one of those sketch places in Africa where you pay to take a bazooka and shoot a poor person, because that's how bad you are, vegans. In all seriousness, there is a good portion of the world that makes their money off raising and killing animals, and there are a lot of solutions for this. Now, people often point to the landscape, saying that there are places where it's semi-arid and these people can only graze animals. Recognizing that this is a problem, you could have global programs that support desertification reversal techniques like they've used in China and elsewhere. According to our calculation, there are over 70 kinds of crops growing here. Crops like corn, tomatoes, sorghum, and sunflowers, transforming more than 200 hectares of sand dunes into an oasis, all within six months. You could also have programs that support the growth of really low water crops, which do exist, or even supporting hydroponics, things like that. But what really puts that problem in perspective is that from the FAO, we feed up to half of the world's grain to livestock. That means that we'd be freeing up that much food. We'd have so much extra food, we'd have enough excess grain in the US alone to feed every single hungry person on earth if we could get it to them. And I love this next point. This huge agricultural transition might be less painful if it were to happen gradually and according to a carefully thought out plan. But who knows how long that would take? But that would never work. Veganism would suck. And while we are talking about economic issues, we would save a ton of money on healthcare expenditures. I have an entire video about this where I go into some of the numbers and I will link that below, but moving on. Environmental changes. I was like, there's no way they can make this into an anti-vegan segment. Methane emissions into the atmosphere will drop as well. Yes, less methane, great. The land that we use to graze livestock or grow food for them will no longer be occupied. Yeah, way more land, also great then we can return that to mother nature and plant trees in this freed up space. But it's not likely to go down like that. And yes, they found a way to make an anti-vegan point out of this. And here, it should be noted that growing these crops would be pretty much impossible without the use of cruel measures against some animals. How else are we supposed to protect our food against rodents? Therefore, the vegan earth would not be able to grow its own food and all the vegans would die. Haha, ha, F you vegans. I mean, I'm neutral. This is where the definition of veganism pops in, from the vegan society that you're trying to reduce the amount of harm to animals as much as is practically possible. You can't pick every single worm out of the soil, but it's going to be a heck of a lot better for the animals. You can also use veganic farming methods and utilize natural predation, just restore the ecosystem and the food chain, and that's what many people are doing now. Not to mention, when using land for agriculture, people often destroy the natural habitat of many animals. Okay, looky here. From this study, vegans require nearly one-eighth the total land to supply their food needs. That means that you would be freeing up like 85% of our agricultural land, and you could give that back to animals. We would also be stopping, you know, 70 to 80% of the Amazon destruction that occurs, which is driven by animal agriculture, and we would be ceasing the leading driver of species extinction on planet Earth, which is animal agriculture. I think animals are going to be doing, they're going to be doing better in this vegan world. 
And while we're going for it, furthermore, we would free up one third of humanity's fresh water. We would also eliminate likely the majority of the dead zones because they're driven by animal agriculture as well. And we would stop one of the leading, if not the leading emitter of greenhouse gases, again, animal agriculture. So we'd be, we'd be looking pretty good. Personal health changes. They do rattle off some vegan health benefits. Great, I'm, I'm so proud of you. But if vegans have an unbalanced diet, it vegans may develop a deficiency of vital substances like protein. If anybody has an unbalanced diet, and I can't believe they brought up protein. I mean, from this study, vegans have higher levels of free blood protein than omnivores. Bright side, is this the 70s? I don't think so. And in terms of B12 for vegans, those deficiencies appear to be going down from a newer study, not statistically significant between vegans and omnivores in terms of deficiency. And we could just put it in the water. It's in untreated water anyway. And in terms of overall health, the reality is from the epidemiology that we see about 15% lower mortality among vegans. We see 15% lower cancer, 78% lower total risk of diabetes and so on. It'd be pretty great. As you can see, a vegan lifestyle doesn't necessarily guarantee you'll age slower than if you were to eat meat on occasion. Now this part was really not cool. Not only was it completely anecdotal, it was just really insensitive. Look how old this one vegan lady looks. Yeah, I'm an asshole. How about this lady though? She eats steak. Wouldn't you rather be her ladies? That's why you don't go vegan. You should Google Annette Larkins. Now for what is probably the biggest chunk of BS in the entire video. It's important to note that some people are simply unable to exclusively consume plant-based products because of allergies to soy, nuts, wheat, and other foods that make up a vegan diet. No, there are no allergies that prevent people from going vegan. That is just not the case. There is that one really rare birth defect where people pee out too much carnitine, like in the case of this one kid who was hospitalized even when he was eating meat, and guess what? He just took carnitine supplements and he was totally fine. There are a lot of vegans that don't eat soy for whatever reason and a lot that don't eat wheat and they do just fine. There are so many plants on planet Earth and y'all just keep eating the same three farm animals. Of course, they spotlight single cases of dietary child abuse through a vegan diet. A severely malnourished 14-month-old vegan baby that only weighed as much as a three-month-old was brought into a hospital in Italy by his concerned grandparents. That happens all the time on a standard diet, but you're gonna hear about it if it's on a vegan diet. But from the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics, the largest organization of nutritional professionals in the world, from their position on vegetarian diets, a well-planned vegan diet is suitable for all stages of life, including babies. A growing body needs sufficient amounts of protein and other nutrients for proper development, and parents should first take care of this before projecting certain views onto their children. Yes, every parent should be feeding their child a balanced diet. But how about projecting this view, huh? How about that bacon view right there? How about how virtually all children in North America by the age of three have fatty streaks on their aorta? How about that view? Vegan pets. Some people are feeding their dogs exclusively vegan food. Cats, however, are predators that need meat or at least animal products. So forcing pets to eat vegan food can very well be regarded as animal cruelty. If the entire world went vegan, we have a couple of solutions to feed animals like cats. First of all, those animal sanctuaries, they will have quite a few natural deaths from animals and you could simply feed those animal corpses to the cats. It's gross, meat is gross. Also the company Just, you may be familiar with the Just Mayo, claims that they will be able to come out with cost competitive, lab grown, cultured meat, whatever you wanna call it, by the end of the year. So we could definitely utilize that to feed these animals. They then go and present Virginia Tech's projections for a vegan U.S. Food production in the country would increase, but that food would likely be short of calcium, vitamin A, and vitamin B12. Which include, Gems like how we wouldn't have enough vitamin A. Have you heard of carrots? Mm, carrots. Carrots too technical for you? I don't know. Here's another recent projection from Harvard. One third of all deaths are from meat. So in the end, again, it was like eight shots fired at veganism for every single positive point. And all of those were directly followed up by a rebuttal of some sort. A vegan diet can help with certain diseases. If you don't die of a protein deficiency first, a vegan diet is good for the environment, but those vegans couldn't even feed themselves because combines kill squirrels, am I right? So I just want to emphasize that none of the points in this hypothetical video are 
anywhere near a justification to not be vegan where you live right now. Finally, if the world did go vegan, it would definitely happen over several years. We could easily ramp down the animal population and we could put them in sanctuaries, which would be massively supported. Most importantly, their video fails to recognize the amazing massive scope of the benefits of the world going vegan. How about not slaughtering and horribly raising 70 billion animals per year? And there would be so many environmental benefits, it would be out of control and we'd be smashing our chronic diseases and even reversing some diseases, which I talk about a lot in my other videos. So that's it, I would have to say bright side, this time you were just a little bit on the dull side. Oh. Ew. So let me know down below, am I being maybe maybe a little too hard on bright side? Were they actually more neutral than I thought? It was just my vegan goggles on, seeing everything as an attack on veganism. Also let me know if you have any suggestions for upcoming videos and that's it. Feel free to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Breaking news, animals have now taken over 45% of the world's ice-free land. Seriously? They already occupy 45% of our ice-free land. Ignore those plot holes. <coughs> in a fight to outrun their past. Humans must survive the farm animal apocalypse.